Hello everyone. Today we'll be talking about macrolides and lincosamides. We'll begin with macrolides. So examples of macrolides include erythromycin, azithromycin, clarithromycin. Mechanism of action is they bind to the 23S ribosomal RNA molecule of the 50S subunit and it leads to blockage of translocation inhibition of bacterial protein synthesis so basically they have a bacteriostatic effect cns penetration is poor and rate of elimination is biliary clinical use so it can work against atypical pneumonia that is caused by mycoplasma pneumonia legionella pneumophilia chlamydophila pneumonia bordetella pertussis sts that are caused by chlamydia Gram positive cocci, especially for the treatment of streptococcal infection in patients who are allergic to penicillin. Neisseria species, second line prophylaxis for Neisseria meningitis, dual therapy with cefcreaxone for Neisseria gonorrhea, or you can use azithromycin, Mycobacterium avium, it can be used as prophylaxis, so we can use azithromycin. The NDH pylori clarithromycin is the is part of the triple therapy for plasma urealyticum babesia species. So by we use azithromycin in combination with atovaquone. Adverse effects include increased intestinal motility, such GI upset, QT interval prolongation, arrhythmias, acute cholestatic hepatitis, eosinophilia, rash, increased risk of hypertrophic pyloric stenosis erythromycin and azithromycin in infants up to six weeks of age. Drug interactions, erythromycin enhances the effect of oral anticoagulants such as warfarin. Erythromycin and clarithromycin increase theophylline serum concentration. Then they lead to inhibition of cytochrome P3A4, which is a cytochrome P450 inhibitor. Special considerations, all macrolides except azithromycin have a short half-life and erythromycin is used off-label for the treatment of gastroparesis because it increases GI motility. Contraindications, erythromycin, astelate and clarithromycin are contraindicated in pregnant women. Azithromycin and clarithromycin are contraindicated in patients with hepatic failure. Erythromycin should be used cautiously. Okay? Consider use of erythromycin in children less than 12 years of age only if benefits outweigh the risk, as safety in this population has not been established. Consider use of clarithromycin and azithromycin in children less than 6 months of age only if benefits outweigh the risks, as safety in this population has not been established. Then, cautious use in breastfeeding women and cautious use of clarithromycin in patients with renal failure. Mechanism of resistance is methylation of the binding site of 23SRRNA prevents the macrolide from binding to rRNA. Now we move on to lincosamide. An example is clindamycin. So mechanism of action is it binds to the 50S subunit, leads to blockage of peptide translocation, which is transpeptidation, inhibition of peptide chain elongation, Inhibition of bacterial protein synthesis, which is basically bacteriostatic effect. CNS penetration is poor and route of elimination is both renal and biliary. Anaerobes such as Clostridium perfringens, bacteroid species, clindamycin is less effective against bacteroids than other anaerobe species. It can be used for aspiration pneumonia, lung abscesses, oral infections, group S streptococcus infections, especially invasive infections. It's partially effective against gram-positive aerobes, can be used in MRS infections, it's not effective against enterococci. Can be used as in treatment of Babesia together with quinine. Special considerations is it has cross-resistance with macrolides. Adverse effects include GI upset such as diarrhea, pseudomembranous colitis, fever, teratogenicity. Contraindication include in pregnant women during the first trimester and breastfeeding women. Clindamycin should be used only if benefits outweigh the risk. So that's all about macrolides. Thank you.